Have you ever wondered how long a human can truly go without food before the body starts to slow down? The question sounds simple, but the science behind it is surprisingly complex. When you stop eating, your body doesn't just turn off like a light switch. It shifts through intricate biochemical stages of survival. From the first missed meal to days without food, your internal systems are constantly recalibrating, trying to balance survival and preservation. What's fascinating is that the limit isn't the same for everyone. Some can last for weeks, while others feel dizzy after just one skipped breakfast. Genetics, hydration, muscle mass, and fat storage all play a part in how your body copes. Scientists have studied fasting monks, stranded explorers, and even medical patients to understand this phenomenon. But here's where it gets really interesting. Your body's goal isn't to punish you for not eating, it's to protect you. Evolution designed humans to survive famine, and your metabolism is the control center that decides how to spend or save energy when food disappears. So, how does your metabolism know when to slow down? We're about to uncover the signals that flip that survival switch deep inside your cells. The first few hours without food are when your body notices something's off. Your blood sugar begins to drop slightly, and your brain, which runs almost entirely on glucose, starts sending signals that you're hungry. The familiar stomach growl? That's your digestive tract contracting as part of a reflex called migrating motor complex, trying to push out leftovers and prepare for the next meal that never comes. At this stage, you're still burning the energy from your last meal. The liver releases stored glucose to keep your blood sugar stable. You might feel fine, maybe a little cranky, but nothing dramatic yet. The system is stable for now. But as the hours pass, the liver's glucose reserve, called glycogen, starts to deplete. This is when your body begins scanning for new sources of energy. Fat, muscles, even tiny stores inside your cells become potential backup fuel. The fascinating part is that your metabolism hasn't slowed down yet. In fact, for a short time it might increase slightly to mobilize stored energy. It's like your body revving the engine before it realizes the gas tank is almost empty. Inside your body, every cell is suddenly faced with a challenge. There's less fuel coming in. Mitochondria, the cell's power plants, start optimizing energy use, switching from carbohydrates to fat. Hormones such as insulin drop, while glucagon and adrenaline rise, signaling your body to release stored fuel. Your brain remains the most demanding organ. Even though it represents only about 2% of your body weight, it consumes roughly 20% of your energy. To keep it running, your body prioritizes glucose delivery to brain cells, even if that means breaking down muscle proteins to create new sugar molecules through a process called gluconeogenesis. During this time, you may feel mild weakness, slight headaches, or irritability all signs that your internal systems are adjusting. Yet this is not dangerous for healthy individuals. It's simply your body's incredible adaptability at work. If we could peek inside, we'd see a biochemical orchestra tuning itself. Some instruments quiet down, others amplify, all to keep the music of life going without missing a beat. Glycogen is your emergency battery pack a form of glucose stored in the liver and muscles. Under normal conditions, it keeps your energy steady between meals. But once you stop eating, your glycogen reserves start depleting within roughly 24 hours. As glycogen runs out, your liver converts fats into ketone bodies, a secondary fuel that the brain can use. This is the start of what's known as ketosis, a natural metabolic state that has gained popularity through ketogenic diets but was originally a survival mechanism. You might feel a mental fog during this transition, but some people report heightened focus once ketones take over. That's because the brain starts adapting to burn fat-derived energy more efficiently.
Interestingly, ancient humans likely entered mild ketosis regularly during periods of food scarcity, which might explain why our bodies handle it so well today. After about one full day without food, the body officially shifts gears. Your insulin levels are now low, your glycogen is nearly gone, and your metabolism is relying on stored fat. The interesting twist? Instead of slowing down immediately, your metabolism remains stable or even slightly elevated, as if your body is giving you one last push to find food. You may feel hungry, yes, but also oddly alert. Evolutionary biologists believe this happens because our ancestors needed mental sharpness to hunt when food was scarce. The body's fight-or-flight chemicals like norepinephrine surge, keeping you energized. However, this stage can't last forever. The body is spending stored energy quickly, and sooner or later, it will have to shift to preservation mode. The countdown to metabolic slowdown has begun. Before we move into that next phase, where your metabolism really starts adapting, tell me in the comments. How long do you think you could go without food before feeling your energy drop? By the second day without food, your body officially switches to its backup strategy, fat burning. Stored triglycerides inside fat cells are broken down into fatty acids and glycerol, which are then used to fuel most organs. This is the body's way of protecting your muscles from being used as energy, at least for a while. You might notice reduced hunger, which surprises many people. That's because the body releases ketones, and ketones have a mild appetite-suppressing effect. Your brain begins to adapt, accepting ketones as its new energy source, which can make you feel strangely clear-headed and focused. From a scientific perspective, this stage is fascinating. You're witnessing an evolutionary survival mechanism, one that allowed early humans to endure days or even weeks without food while searching for the next meal. But even as your body gets more efficient at burning fat, it's also preparing for a slowdown. The longer the fast continues, the more protective your metabolism becomes. After two or three days, your body begins to receive the message that food might not be coming back soon. Your thyroid hormones, especially T3, start to drop. These hormones are crucial regulators of metabolic speed, and their decline signals your system to conserve energy. Your heart rate might slightly decrease, your body temperature could dip, and your movements become subconsciously slower. This isn't weakness, it's preservation. The body is learning to make every calorie count. Interestingly, your metabolism doesn't crash all at once. It's a gradual process, shaped by your body composition and previous eating habits. Someone who regularly diets harshly might see a faster slowdown, while a person with more consistent eating habits may take longer to adjust. So when does the real metabolic slowdown begin? It's usually after 72 hours of fasting. That's when your body officially flips into long-term survival mode. The so-called starvation mode is often misunderstood. It's not your body trying to sabotage weight loss. It's a deeply evolved defense mechanism. When energy intake stays low for too long, your body reduces non-essential processes. Hair growth, reproductive hormones, and even certain immune functions slow down to save energy. Meanwhile, cortisol, the stress hormone, rises. It helps release stored glucose and maintain blood sugar, but too much of it over time can make you feel anxious or fatigued. In survival mode, your body is walking a tightrope between preservation and breakdown. From a cellular point of view, autophagy, the self-cleaning process, ramps up. Your cells start recycling old or damaged components to create new energy, which is one of the most remarkable adaptive features of fasting. In short, your body isn't just slowing down, it's reorganizing itself for efficiency, a biological reboot driven by necessity. Here's where confusion often arises. Intermittent fasting and starvation may look similar, but they're completely different beasts. In controlled fasting, you eat within specific time windows, and your body knows that food is coming back soon. In starvation, the timeline is unknown, and that uncertainty changes everything. Intermittent fasting can actually improve metabolic flexibility, making your body better at switching between fuel sources. It can enhance insulin sensitivity, support cellular repair, and even extend lifespan in some studies. Starvation, on the other hand, pushes the body too far. 
hormones fall out of balance, muscle loss accelerates, and energy drops sharply. It's no longer optimization, it's defense. So, the next time someone claims fasting kills your metabolism, remember, it depends on the context. The body thrives on balance, not extremes. By this point, your hormones are calling all the shots. Insulin remains low to allow fat breakdown, while leptin, the hormone that tells you you're full, also drops, intensifying hunger. Meanwhile, ghrelin, the hunger hormone, spikes periodically, teasing your brain to find food. Cortisol stays elevated, ensuring enough glucose for your brain, but chronic elevation can lead to muscle breakdown. The thyroid hormones slow energy expenditure, while growth hormone rises to protect lean mass and stimulate repair. It's a delicate biochemical ballet. You might experience waves of fatigue mixed with strange bursts of energy. That's your body's shifting chemistry at work, adapting in real time. Every system, from your liver to your brain, is renegotiating how to survive the energy crisis. It's at this stage that people often experience the most mental clarity, or conversely, mental fog. The outcome depends entirely on how efficiently your body has made the switch to fat and ketone metabolism. If you had to choose between a day of complete fasting or trying intermittent fasting for a week, which would you pick and why? Share your answer in the comments below. It helps others learn from your experience. History has recorded some jaw-dropping examples of how far the human body can go without food. One of the most documented cases is that of Angus Barbieri, a Scottish man who under medical supervision fasted for an incredible 382 days in the 1960s, surviving on only water, vitamins, and minerals. His body adapted so efficiently that he lost over 120 kilograms while maintaining relatively stable health. Other cases, like shipwreck survivors or hunger strikers, show similar patterns. During long periods without food, the body first consumes glycogen, then fat, and finally, when no other option remains, muscle tissue. The true danger comes when protein breakdown becomes the main energy source. That's when organ function begins to fail. Medical science suggests that, in ideal hydration conditions, a healthy human can survive between 40 and 70 days without food. However, this is far from sustainable. The longer the fast continues, the more the immune system weakens and the body begins to sacrifice vital proteins just to stay alive. These stories aren't just about endurance, they're about adaptation. They show the remarkable flexibility of human biology, a system that can recalibrate itself even under the most extreme conditions, always prioritizing one goal, survival. When you stop eating, your brain doesn't simply slow down, it transforms the way it operates. Normally dependent on glucose, the brain starts learning to use ketones as its main fuel source after a few days of fasting. This shift not only keeps neurons firing, but also activates pathways that protect brain cells from oxidative stress and inflammation. Many people report a sense of heightened mental clarity during prolonged fasting. Scientists believe this may be linked to increased production of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, BDNF, a protein that supports neuron growth and communication. In evolutionary terms, this makes perfect sense. Our ancestors needed to stay sharp and alert while hunting for food during times of scarcity. However, this clarity doesn't last forever. When the body starts breaking down muscle for glucose production, cognitive functions can suffer. Concentration weakens, memory declines, and the brain begins to slow communication between neurons to conserve energy. It's a delicate balance. For a time, fasting sharpens the mind, but prolonged deprivation eventually dims it. The brain, just like the body, can adapt magnificently, but only up to a point before preservation turns into exhaustion. Have you ever noticed how some people thrive during fasting while others feel drained after just a few hours? The difference lies in metabolic flexibility, how efficiently your body can switch between fuel sources. People with stable blood sugar, balanced hormones, and healthy muscle mass tend to adapt more smoothly, burning fat with fewer side effects. Genetics also play a role. 
some individuals naturally produce more enzymes for fat oxidation, while others rely heavily on carbohydrate metabolism. Women, for example, often experience hormonal fluctuations that make long fasting periods more challenging, especially due to the impact on reproductive hormones like estrogen and leptin. Psychological resilience matters too. Studies show that individuals with strong mental focus and purpose can endure fasting longer, likely due to lower stress hormone levels and greater control over hunger cues. The brain, it seems, can influence metabolism as much as metabolism influences the brain. In the end, fasting and metabolism are not one-size-fits-all. They're personal shaped by a web of biological, psychological, and even emotional factors that make every human body unique in its response to hunger. After a long fast, eating again might seem like a relief, but this stage can be surprisingly dangerous if not handled correctly. The body, after being in energy conservation mode, suddenly receives a flood of glucose and nutrients. Insulin spikes and cells rapidly absorb electrolytes like phosphate, potassium, and magnesium. This can lead to refeeding syndrome, a potentially life-threatening condition if the transition isn't gradual. Historically, refeeding syndrome was first observed during World War II when malnourished prisoners were suddenly given large amounts of food. Their bodies couldn't process the sudden influx, leading to heart and respiratory complications. That's why doctors today recommend reintroducing calories slowly after extended fasts, allowing metabolism to stabilize again. Beyond the medical risks, there's also the psychological element. Intense cravings, emotional responses to food, and even guilt can arise after deprivation. The body remembers scarcity, and the mind often fears it will return. The lesson here is clear. Ending a fast safely is just as important as the fast itself. True health isn't found in extremes, but in restoring balance, feeding the body gently with awareness and respect for its biological limits. Before you discover how your body fully recovers from fasting, check out this next video. How long could you fast before losing muscle tissue? It reveals the exact moment your body starts breaking down muscle tissue for energy and what science says you can do to prevent it. When we ask how long a person can go without food before the metabolism slows down, we're really asking something deeper. How far can the human body adapt to survive? The answer is farther than most of us imagine. Our metabolism is not fragile, it's intelligent ancient, and beautifully designed to protect us. It slows not out of weakness, but out of wisdom, a deliberate shift into preservation mode, honed through thousands of years of evolution. Every hormone, every enzyme, every cell in your body knows how to respond when food disappears. It's one of nature's most astonishing balancing acts. But perhaps the greatest lesson fasting teaches us isn't about deprivation, it's about appreciation. Each bite of food, each surge of energy, each heartbeat is part of a miraculous system that evolved to keep you alive against all odds. So next time you eat, take a moment to thank the quiet genius of your metabolism. It's the invisible force that's been keeping you alive since the dawn of humanity. And if you learned something new today, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with someone curious about the science of survival. Who knows, it might just change how they see their own body.